Hey, what's up, you guys? This is Sheila Vila coming to you with uh, another review of Basketball Wives Season 11, Episode 8, No Magic Mike. Yeah, this, ep <laughs> this episode was crazy. It was really crazy. And what they say, run up, get done up. <laughs> run up, Clayana, and get your wig snatched. All right, so here we are. Um, please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe if you get anything out of my commentary on the road to 5,000 subscribers. Um, when you hit the like button, it does help me go through the algorithm so more of my people can start to see my content. Now, let's get into this episode. Okay, the girls are still on the trip in Arizona, and Brooke had to leave because she said, you know, the holidays are here, and she just don't. She just don't feel right doing celebrations and birthdays and holidays without her daughter. So she just decided to go ahead and go home. So now we have her back at home in LA, right? So her um, ex-husband, he comes over. I guess he was dog sitting. So when he opens, well, when she opens the door, her ex-husband comes in and... He was rubbing on her booty and kissing her all in the mouth. <laughs> and then he gives her back the dog. And he said, you know, that's payment for him keeping it out. I said, well, okay. Booty, booty rubs and kisses. All right. <laughs> it is what it is. So they go and they take a seat, right? And then um, Brooke begins to tell him that, you know, she's preparing for the nonprofit. Um, the nonprofit event that she's having in um in memory of in, in honor of her daughter Kayla and um she was just trying to get sponsors and donations and all that stuff um I forget what it's called but I know it has something to do with cosmetology school because I believe Brooke was a cosmetologist and she said she had her own shop at what 21 and then her daughter was a cosmetologist and she's um connecting with Jaseel and we know that Jaseel is a cosmetologist. So she just um, trying to prepare everything for her event. And that's going to happen later on in this episode. All right. So this is the day of the actual. Um, Jackie called it a bridal shower, but nobody's getting married. But Jackie also said if Avalon were to get married, then this will be something that they did for her, I guess. <laughs> but girl, it's just the way for them to go out and have a good time and party. Um but but before they did get to the eat the um venue, before they got to the venue, Jackie went was it Jackie went in spoke with Vanessa. Vanessa said she wasn't gonna make it because Vanessa seemed like she was really, really depressed. And she said she was still sad over the conversation that she had with Evelyn about her husband cheating and all that other stuff, right? And then um, Jaseel had a conversation with Brittany about Clayana. May or may not come to the to the male strip club. That's what they went. They went to a male strip club. So um, Clayana may or may not show up because as we all know, there is tension in the group. The group is, it's not a split. It's like two against everybody else. So we'll see. So this is the day of the event, right? The night of the event. Everybody's there. Everybody's having a good time. And um, Brittany tells the group that she invited Clayana. And when she says she invited Clayana, you can see Evelyn's face was instant like, oh, okay, whatever. And Jackie, <laughs> Jackie is just like, okay, whatever, right? So Clayana comes in and yeah, Clayana comes in, but it seems as if everybody was having a good time. Jackie, you know, she got up and gave Clayana some money so she can give to the strippers. And um, Brittany was saying that Jackie was fake. Because on one hand, she act like she didn't like Clayana. And then on the other hand, she didn't like Clayana. So they were saying that she was fake. And even Jennifer had peeped that Jackie was being fake because Jackie was just talking about Clayana, calling her a little gremlin. She, a little gremlin. I was like, okay, Jackie. But they are in a male strip club. So they want to have a good time. Jennifer says she don't want none of them 
strip of men gyrating and jumping up and down on her because she with her man Christian and she ain't got time to be no Kiki and Usher when it goes all over the internet. I was like, girl, you can never, ever, ever, never, ever, 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 ever be Kiki and your man will never, never, ever, ever, never, ever, never, neither or, either or be a Usher. So we don't care. <laughs> nobody, nobody at all don't care. All right. So they having a good time, right? The strippers come out. Jackie talking about her husband and her have a good time. Her husband's the only man for her. But child, them legs went up in the air when that stripper came down <laughs> on top of her. But they was out having a good time and it was all fun. It was all fun. And then there became there was a segment when um, one of the strippers they pulled out a chair, and Evelyn got her lap dance. Child, Evelyn said, "Look, I came here for a good time, not a long time." She said she ain't seen her man in months, and this is the most action that she has gotten in a long time. And I don't blame her. Have fun, have a ball, child. When have when 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 you gonna go back to a male strip club? Because they said they like to see the women anyway. And Jaseel said that Jackie lied to her because she said that it was gonna be women there and it's all men. It's okay, Jaseel. <laughs> you know what a man look like. You got a whole baby. It is okay. So anyway, they having a good time, right? They having a good time. So after um Evelyn gets her lap dance from the man, the male stripper. It seems as if they took a break because all of a sudden the people had cheeseburgers and French fries and drink. I said, okay, so they eat real good. And then the Cardi B song came on. There are some woes in this house. There are some woes in this house. When you see them, point them out. When you see them, point them out. So apparently Jennifer was doing what the song said. There was some woes in the house and she was pointing over at Clayana. And Clayana is like, I know you're not pointing at me. I know you're not calling me no woe. And Jennifer was just pointing and then Clayana pointed back. You know, so Jennifer point, there's some woes, there's some woes, there's some woes in this house. And then Clayana pointed back. There's some woes, there's some woes, there's some woes in this. You know, so it was like a back and forth. Okay, cool. It is what it is, right? You do me, I do you. You get your lick back. Okay, so it really should be pretty much done. But uh-uh-uh, it's not done. Because we're dealing with Clayana here. The person that doesn't know how to let things go. So Clayana, she goes over to Brittany. And she says, Brittany, Jennifer was pointing at me when the song came on. That there was some woes in this house. And she pointed at me. And I'm not no woe. So then, Jaseel comes, and they're telling Jaseel. So Jaseel goes over there to Evelyn and um, Jennifer, and just like, okay, so Clayana said that you were pointing at her when the song came on. Woo, woo. Jennifer said, I did. And Evelyn said, okay, well, she said she did. So, uh, hey, that's between Jennifer and Clayana. I'm out of it. Keep in mind, she said, I'm out of it. <laughs> okay. So, Jaseel went back and told the girls, Clayana and Brittany, what they said. Okay. So, Jennifer did say that she 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 said that she pointed at you. But, you know, Evelyn said, you know, what is y'all? She, she out of it. That's between y'all. Whatever. This is the part that I didn't get. Because, Clayana, you knew that Jennifer was pointing at you and talking about you and you in return pointed back at her and talked about her but then you go and you take your shoes off see that's why i'm like what are what what is going what is going on in this conversation nobody said they wanted to fight nobody said come bum rush me nobody said anything nothing about putting their hands or nothing 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 right Clayana is taking off her shoes and she, like a raging bull, runs over Jennifer. And now she's standing directly. And you see Jennifer got her hand up like, 
I don't know what this girl is going to do. I don't understand why she's hovering over me like this. And then she questioning her. So I'm a woe. I'm a woe. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a woe. I'm a, I'm a show you a woe. But it didn't quite work in Kleana's favor because let's remember Jennifer and Evelyn, they're friends. They are like basketball wives season one and two, not the three and the four, but the season the ones and the twos, right? So they back there. They like friend friends. They went to talk to the shaman. They went and went around the, 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 the fire and they said, we, I'm here for you, me and you, us never part. My t title, like we are not going to ever break up. And we all know if we've been watching basketball wise for 11 seasons, we all know that Jennifer can't fight. Jennifer is not a fighter. She can't fight. She won't fight, but she will run her mouth. But she's not going to throw no punch. Jennifer will call the police, right? Or call somebody close enough to the police. And Evelyn knows this. Evelyn knows her friend because Evelyn is the bulldog. So you got bulldog meets bull dog. <laughs> like pot meat kettle. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. So Kleana is hovering, irate, yelling. So you, so you. And Jennifer is defensive, defenseless. Now we had this whole conversation about Brooke standing up. Now Brooke won nowhere near Brittany or Clayana when she she stood up away from everybody. Like she stood up and stepped back. Clayana, you took your shoes off, ran over there with all of your might. Jaseel tried to hold on, wait, 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 wait. Tried to stop you, but you didn't care. You and that all of that wig, that hair. Girl, you should have glued that on better. Probably should have got it so in. I don't know. But you rushed over there, hovered over this girl, irate and mad, and you expect them not to do nothing. Make it make sense. So you expect nobody, nobody at all. You want so you think you finna punk somebody. Now these girls been on this show for 11 seasons, and you think you finna punk them. Child bye. As soon as she went over there, girl, Evelyn done went. Grab that girl by that wig. And then Cleona got hauled off. And it's so crazy too because even Jackie stood up. Jackie was like, they were holding Jackie back. Like everybody was trying to get at this girl. Everybody, because at the end of the day, nobody knew what you were coming over there to do. Because you weren't coming over there to talk. Taking your shoes off, running over there, cussing, talking crazy. And you really think somebody's just going to sit down and let you do that. Make it make sense. And then the crazy part about it too, Brittany brought it up. I'm going to skip a little bit. Brittany brought it up. Brittany brought it up saying, well, well, if you can't get mad because you call somebody a woe, you just going to get what you're going to get. Okay. She ran over there and she got what she got. Anyway, Brittany, you, you, you need to make it make sense because it don't. Okay. Now I'm getting back into this scene. Child, Evelyn took all that girl wig. I got your wig. I got your wig. Okay. And then after the whole wig incident, Evelyn jumps on top of the, the couch and she's dancing and she like swinging that wig rodeo style. And why everybody in the audience is like, whoa, everybody drunk. Just still looking like, oh my God. Right. So then the tables are split. So you have three girls over on one side talking about what is going on, what's happening, you know, and then Jackie saying that Jaseel, she trying to figure out what Jaseel said because she running back and forth between everybody. And then you got Brittany and Jaseel over there looking like, oh my God. But at first it did seem like Jaseel was with them because she did say, yeah, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with, you know what I'm saying? You taking nobody wig off. That was unwarranted and all of that. But Jaseel, you from Mississippi. And that's all I got to say. And you sound like you from Mississippi. So you know what's up. You don't run up on nobody. And come on. Really just. I know you trying to be neutral. But in this instance, you need to just stand firm in what you believe and just leave it alone. All right. So. Yeah, I think I did skip anyway. 
So Evelyn crying. I don't know if they was crying. I don't know what they was doing, but Jennifer was hu hugging all on Evelyn. Um, thank you so much. And then she was like, no, Jen, she came for you. She came for you because I, oh, that's what it was. Evelyn was going to get back up because it was, this was the melee. Evelyn was going to get right back up, go run out to her because Evelyn started taking her shoes out. And that's when she was getting right back up to run over there. They, that's when everybody was going crazy, right? No, Jen telling Evelyn to calm down, calm down. And Evelyn was like, no, Jen, she came for you. She came for you, right? So after all of that, everybody calmed down. That's when Evelyn got on the couch and she was riding that wig like a cowboy, spinning around and around in a circle. So it's crazy, too, because... um. They were saying, is she still here? Is she still here? If Cleana, was Cleana still there? Was Cleana still there? So that's when Evelyn went outside and looked looking for her. And she was like, I got your wig. I got your wig. You know. And so I guess Evelyn and Jennifer had a heart to heart because she said, you know, you my girl. And I meant that. I meant that with the charm and I'm releasing everything. And she said, I feel good about it. We back together. We friends forever, ever, 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 ever. And Jennifer over there said, I know, I love you. I love you. I love you. Girl, you better be glad that um Evelyn was there because Cleana would have molly wiped you, Jennifer. <laughs> you better start using them long arms. Anyway, so child, they get on the bus. Now you got the three girls in one bus and the other two in the other one. And Evelyn... Kyle and Brooke on the phone talking about girl, look, look. Evelyn had took this girl wig and put it on. Now, Evelyn, you don't know if that girl washed that wig. You don't know where that wig. You, I wouldn't have put this girl wig on my head without it being washed, dried, washed, dried, rebleached knots, and everything. Like, no, you don't know nothing about Clayana. Why are you putting that girl hair on top of your hair? Chad, that's a soul tie right there. The wig. Anyway. So, Evelyn and got this girl wig on. When I tell you, I was like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> you okay? You know what? I cannot. I will not. Brooke talking about send me a picture of the wig. Child, you can screenshot it. <laughs> she got you on the FaceTime. Just do a quick screenshot. It'll be all right. But anyway, so they over there taking pictures in the wig, and then you got the other two girls over there look like they dry and they about to go to sleep. So that's what that was. Back over there at the house, um, Brooke is getting ready for her event. And she met up with one of her family friends, Kayvon. That's my nephew name, y'all. Hey, Kayvon. Um, she meeting up with Kayvon, and apparently he plays football for the Giants. I don't know who you are, so I wouldn't bid on your jersey. Matter of fact, I ain't bidding on nobody's jersey because I ain't really in a football like that. So, But he's doing a nice gesture by, you know, offering up a... a, 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 a signature jersey a jersey with his signature on it so they can donate it or auction out for her charity event now the girls Brittany and Jaseel they've gotten together and Brittany is about to go home because she said she just can't deal with it right now like she's not in the right headspace so she just doesn't want to deal with it and um Jaseel is saying yeah I'm I'm going ahead and go to brunch because I'm hungry and again, Jaseel says, you know, when you run up onto somebody, you stand over them. That's pretty much fighting words. But then when you taking somebody wig off, that's uncalled for. Like, that's not necessary. So that's what that was. All the girls get together. Vanessa, she shows up. And then they begin to talk about the night before about Cleona. Um... Jaseel, she still expresses herself, as she said uh, the, the whole time, about, you know, Cleona being a raging bull, hovering over somebody. And um, Evelyn says, you don't, you don't run up on somebody and expect for them not to do anything. Jaseel's whole thing is you don't take anybody's wig off because whatever. Um... Evelyn also brings uh, Brittany and she says that Brittany pretty much picked a side because she's not there. Like pick a side, pick a side. And Evelyn feels like she went out of her way for Brittany and Brittany didn't return the favor. 
And so now it seems as if Evelyn has an issue with Brittany because she didn't show up. Child, you got to show up for brunch or you're going to be on the outs. And um, overall, Jackie said outside of the drama, then the trip was pretty much cool. You know, even they stay, they still had a good time at the male strip club and the shaman and all that stuff. So, you know, and uh, Vanessa, she apologized to Jennifer. She did. She apologized to Jennifer. And that's pretty. And she said, I will not collect any more bones or bills unless somebody asks me to. I said, thank you. Can you can, can you now do something with your bang? And then that'll be, that'll be, that'll be just perfect. Right? So yeah, that was pretty much it with that scene. Jennifer is home and her man bought her the dog that she wanted and she's very happy. And she brings up Vanessa. She brings up Vanessa looking through Christian's history, investigating him. And, you know, she, as she said before, they're very open and honest with each other. And basically, misery loves company. She's not happy. And Jennifer said that she really laid into her. Girl, with Evelyn by your side, you really laid into her. But anyway, but misery loves company. And she just going to leave her where she at. This is the day of Brooke's event. And it was a nice turnout. Brooke told everybody how she got started about her daughter, the nonprofit. And um, they're going to be helping people with tuition. Um, if you're a good student, if you're an interim student, however it is, they're going to help you with tuition. And um, also the director there, he is donating $500 for the estate because they have a new program for estheticians. So for a new esthetician um, entering into the school, for five hundred dollars. Oh, and Jocel is there as well because she's giving gifting some of her products too. So that was good. All right, so now we get down to the end of the episode. And one thing, Jocel lied, and I'm really mad that she lied because this girl is a cosmetologist. She looked at this girl and said, "I mean, her makeup. Yeah, she said her makeup was cute and her hair was cute." Girl, look at that. That girl face looked purple. And that girl her look like it's stuck. Anyway, so they end up talking about the Cole Cleona thing. And um Brittany feels that Cleona was right. And I do not understand how she feels that Cleona was right. She said that her and Evelyn said that they were not going to insert themselves in anything. But Evelyn inserted herself in into that. Well, yes, she did. She did insert herself. Okay, I'll give it to you. One point for Brittany. But all that other stuff, no. You, They was pointing at each other. Like I done said a hundred times already. They pointed at each other. I pointed at you. You pointed at me. Okay, that's it. And then the thing is, too. Brittany did ask Jaseel, like, what would you do if somebody was pointing at you, talking about you or whoa, you or whoa, whatever, whatever. And then she said that I'll just be like, no, I ain't none. You, you know, really point back. It ain't really about fighting. It's just, this is what I am. This is what you is. And that's it. But this is what Brittany is failing to realize that that girl literally took her shoes off and ran over there. You're charging at somebody. It wasn't just like she walked over there nicely and was just hovering over. Matter of fact, don't hover over nobody. It wasn't like she walked over there, sat down and said, hey, can I have a moment with you, Jennifer? She didn't even do that. She didn't, nothing. She ran over there like she was Billy Bad and she got her wig snatched. It is what it is. Now, Brittany feels as if Jessiel taking that she's being neutral and that she needs to take a side. But at the end of the day, it looks like Cleona not going to be on this show no more. So Brittany, you're going to be on an island all by yourself. So you're going to have to figure something out. Cause she almost made it seem as if she was leaving because she said she couldn't handle all the pressure and everything that's going on. And she said she really didn't say nothing because she felt like she don't know how to say anything. But by you not saying anything, 
makes you look guilty as well. Because, and, and, and by the words that you're saying, you're taking Cleon aside. And that's okay. But just stand in it and be prepared for all the actions. Because guess what? What you don't know, Brittany, is Cleon ain't coming back. And they made that decision at that table. Because Jackie did say it. Because if you would have went to brunch, you would have known that Cleona ain't coming back. Because Jackie said, well, don't nobody want to be around her no more. And Jackie said, um, I don't know how I'm going to tell this girl she can't come around the group no more. So, Brittany, you done isolated yourself for a person that ain't going to even be there. Now, how you going to feel about that? Come on. How you going to feel about that? You picked the wrong side. Talking about pick a side. You picked the wrong side. And it really don't have nothing to do with you. So you should be neutral. You should. And even like Giselle said, like they, them people been friends for years. And you really think that I'm going to let, man, please. If I'm with my, my friend and this girl running, like running full force, oh, no. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to do. So my first defense is to defend myself. But anyway, y'all, Cleon, um, um, Jaseel said that her, that Brittany and Evelyn need to sit down and have a conversation. Yeah. Because it looks like, <laughs> I don't know who you're going to have a conversation with because in the future, because Cleon look like she's not coming back. Or maybe she might. I don't know. But from the from the looks of this episode, bye, Cleana. All right, y'all. This Sheila be the like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think about this episode. Do y'all think that Cleana was right? Or do you think that Cleana was wrong? Do you think that Brittany should choose or pick a side? Do you feel like Brittany chose the wrong side? Maybe she should. you think she should just be neutral like Jaseel so she can keep her check coming. All right. Let me know. We'll discuss in the comments. Have a great day. Bye.